who is responsible for the extinction at a faster rate now it is the human beings many types of tiger species have also become completely extinct from the planet human intervention in the environment will reduce the rainfall because of cutting of trees when it becomes extinct its unique assemblage of parasites also meets the same fate Hello everyone a warm welcome to today's session on chapter 15 of second pc that is biodiversity and conservation i'm dr divya biology faculty vidyashram pre university college mysore temple of excellence so in the previous session of this chapter we had discussed about the patterns of biodiversity and also we learned about how many species are there exactly in this plan in today's session let us study about the loss of biodiversity and what are the factors that are resulting in the loss of biodiversity let us learn with about loss of biodiversity so the biological wealth of a planet has been declining rapidly and the accusing finger is clearly pointing to human activities that is true right so whatever happens to nature it is either it can be because of the natural calamities such as the volcanic eruptions the natural forest fires or because of the uh, flood conditions due to heavy rainfall etc but majority of the factors wherein we human beings our greed towards nature is the one that is actually causing a loss in the biodiversity so we are we human beings are the major factors or major reason why loss of biodiversity is occurring and the colonization of tropical pacific islands by the humans is said to have led to the extinction of more than 2000 species of native birds so for the tourism purposes the a lot of the islands that is the pacific islands or the tropical pacific islands have been occupied by the human population and their disturbances in that particular environment or ecosystem has eventually led to the extinction of around 2000 that is more than 2000 species of birds which were residing in that particular island so that is how human intervention is causing a lot of imbalance in the biodiversity so biodiversity loss according to iucn that is international union for conservation of nature and natural resources they put out a list in the year 2004 to find out exactly how many animals have been wiped out from this planet or how many animals have become extinct so they found out that 784 species of animals have been extinct and in that 784 species 338 species were vertebrates 359 species were invertebrates and 87 species of plants have become extinct in the year 2004 so imagine at what rate human is causing a problem to the environment according to them that is not just in 2004 they actually put out a list but this was the data that was collected in the last 500 years so since 500 years a total of 784 species have been completely extinct from this planet and some examples of recent extinctions that have occurred are the dodo bird so dodo bird was usually found in mauritius island so it was endemic to mauritius island because it was only found there this bird actually got extinct because of the travelers who visited mexico's mauritius island and next is quago quago is an animal which looks almost like a zebra so this animal also is not found nowadays and it was found in africa that is quago next in australia this is a mammal that is a marsupial that is thylacin which was found in australia now it is not present at all and we have the stella sea cow that was found in the waters of russia but nowadays it is not there because it has become completely extinct and uh, many types of tiger species have also become completely extinct from the planet for example we have the bali tiger which is not seen today and we have 
the javan tiger that has become extinct and also the caspian tiger that has become extinct so caspian tiger has become extinct since earlier itself that is why a proper picture of that is not available and only paintings of that are available so this is how different species have become extinct since 500 years and these are the species which have become extinct recently so next talking about the last 20 years so in the last 20 years a total of 27 species are said to have disappeared from this planet or, or have become extinct and careful analysis of the records that is the wildlife records which have been taken or the census that have been done on the wildlife it has shown that extinctions across taxa are not random let's say for example some groups of amphibians appear more vulnerable to extinction when compared to others. So, it's not that at a particular time, a particular species get extincted. Sometimes, some species at a particular time becomes more vulnerable to extinction when compared to other species. Or say, for example, the population of amphibians reduces and the population of the reptiles, for example, the snakes, they increases, then obviously the extinction of the amphibians can be faster. And not just that, amphibians, they require land and water for their survival. And they require water, especially during the breeding season, right? And human intervention in the environment will reduce the rainfall because of cutting of trees. This reduction in the rainfall will eventually dry out the ponds, lakes, rivers, etc. Therefore, posing a threat to amphibians. So, that is why the extinctions that are there are usually not random across the taxa. And adding to the grim scenario of extinctions is the fact that more than 15,500 species worldwide are facing the threat of extinction. It is said that because of human intervention, that is 15,500 species of different organisms worldwide are at the verge of extinction. Presently, 12% of all bird species, 23% of all mammal species, 32% of all the amphibian species and 31% of all the gymnosperm species in the world face the threat of extinction. So, there are many bird species which are at the verge of extinction. Vultures are one of the best example. They are at the verge of extinction or we have uh, different types of mammals. The tigers are at the verge of extinction and also some amphibian species are at the verge of extinction. And gymnosperms, the best example that we can take off is Ginkgo biloba, which is a plant that is usually found only in the Buddhist monastery because everywhere else, wherever that plant was growing, that is not available now. So, it is at the verge of extinction. So, like this, there are different species that are there which are at the verge of extinction or which are at the threat of extinction. So, through fossil records also, we can find out how many species are, have become extinct. So, through fossil records, we learned that large-scale loss of species so, through fossil records also we can find out which species have become extinct. The best example that we can take off is the dinosaur, right? When we human beings came into existence, we didn't know about the dinosaurs. But how did we know that something called the dinosaurs were present during the dinosaur era? Right, it was because of the fossil records that were available. And during the long period, that is during more than 3 billion years ago, since the origin and diversification of life on earth were 5 episodes of mass extinction of species. So, until the present day organisms that you can see around before, that is since 300 million years ago, almost 5 episodes or 5 seasons of extinction has occurred wherein in that particular five seasons five episodes different organisms have become extinct meaning today what organisms you're seeing prior to that there were many organisms which were present but all those have become extinct so that is what it means so the difference is in the rates the current species extinction rates are estimated to be 100 to 1000 times faster than in the pre-human times. So, imagine 
for in during the pre human times that is before humans could exist it took more than 3 million years for some of the species to become extinct but now the extinction of species after humans came to earth or after the evolution of humans on earth it is said that the extinction of species has occurred in such a faster rate that it that it is 100 to 1000 times faster when compared to the extinction of animals or organisms which were occurring before the existence of the human so therefore who is responsible for the extinction at a faster rate now it is the human being so ecologists wants that or they say that if the present trend that is if a continuous rate of extinction continues like this nearly half of the species on the earth might be wiped out with the next 100 years imagine before humans had existed due to natural calamities and all that it took more than 3 million years for the extinction to take place but once the human beings came to this planet the extinction was very very fast and if this continues in a faster rate there is no doubt that within 100 years almost all species will get wiped out from this particular planet so in general loss of biodiversity in a region may lead to a lot of problems and what are those we shall look into so it can cause decline in plant production it can cause lower resistant to environmental stresses such as drought and it can an increased variability in certain ecosystem processes such as it can alter the plant productivity rate the usage of water the pest and the disease cycles as well so this will happen if there is loss of biodiversity because sometimes what happens when you take the example of plant species those plant species which are highly good or capable of surviving if they themselves become extinct then a lot of other plant species that are there they might be put into a lot of threat therefore resulting in decline in or Uh, resulting in lowering in the product plant production and also lowering the resistance that are rendered by some plants to drought and all that and also increased variability in certain ecosystem such as plant productivity water use pest and disease cycles so next let's study about the causes of biodiversity losses so this causes of biodiversity in losses is explained in four points that is why it, these four points are called as the evil quartet evil means something bad quartet means it is four right so what are the four reasons why biodiversity is under a loss so the first reason is because of habitat and fragmentation therefore the first evil is habitat loss and fragmentation second one is over exploitation third one is because of the invasion of the alien species fourth one is because of co extinctions co extinction is nothing but one species gets extinct then obviously the other species which is dependent on the extinct species will also become extinct very soon so that is co extinction so these are four different causes for biodiversity hence it is called as the evil quartet so we shall study about these in detail first is habitat loss and fragmentation habitat loss say for example there are a variety of amphibians amphibians are mainly adapted to thrive in rainforests because they prefer wet moist environmental conditions for their survival now if that rainforest something happens to that rainforest it will completely wipe out the amphibian species so that is about one of the example for habitat loss and fragmentation so tropical rainforest for example once this tropical rainforest was covering about 14% of the earth's land surface and these rainforests but now because of human intervention or because of loss of biodiversity it is just it will not even cover more than 6% it covers less than 6% of the earth's area so imagine when this drastic decline from 14% of the earth's land surface having tropical rainforest to that of less than 6% of the earth's surface now at present having the tropical rainforest how many amphibian species or how many species would have been become extinct right so the um, uh, so here we'll take the example of the amazon rainforest so amazon rainforest is so huge and it harbors a 
wide variety of species which you can find nowhere else in the world and therefore and it is also one of the rainforest that is abundant with thick canopy of trees and it is called as the lungs of the planet and this amazon rainforest it actually harbors or it has about millions of species there but because of human intervention it is said that probably millions of species is being cut and cleared for cultivating soya bean so amazon rainforest is very vast with abundant trees and all that and therefore it is called as the lungs of the planet but nowadays recently in order to expand agriculture that is especially to grow or to cultivate soya beans or in order to convert the amazon rainforest into grazing land so that the cattle rearers and all can allow the animals to graze there or for conversion to grasslands for raising beef cattle the amazon rainforest have been cut and it is said that currently millions of species of plants or trees have been cut from the amazon rainforest now imagine if millions of plants or trees have been cut from the amazon rainforest how much loss of biodiversity or how much loss of species or extinction of species might have occurred there right so this is how because of human intervention because of his thoughts on increasing his particular economy has led to the destruction of the ecosystem in the amazon rain forest especially for agricultural purposes and for cattle rearing purposes and besides total loss the degradation of many habitats by pollution so apart from because of deforestation there is habitat loss occurring apart from that because of pollution also it has resulted in the or it has caused a threat to the survival of many of the species and when large habitats are broken down into smaller fragments so here what happens say for example there is a very vast forest but making a road through that forest will decrease the connectivity time between two cities so what people will do is or what the government will decide is let us clear a portion of the forest and let us build a road in the center now you're breaking the forest into bits that forest area which you have broken might be a elephant corridor what is a ele elephant corridor elephants or any other animal usually they'll have a path for their movement and only that path say for example that path might lead to a water hole somewhere nearby or might lead to a area which fetches them good food so when that path is disturbed that is the time when animals will start entering into the villages and all that so therefore when large habitats are broken up into small fragments due to various human activities mammals and birds which require large territories and certain animals as well as migratory birds which need to move from one area to another through that particular territory their population will start to decline say for example it is a animal corridor for the deers to pass so imagine on a highway a highway has been created in the middle of a forest now because the creation of the highway in the middle of the forest the forest has been cut into smaller bits right because there are full trees on one side middle there is no trees because of road construction again you have trees on the other side now that particular area one point or one area will be the place where these deers usually pass or cross in search of water or for food purpose so in a highway we all know that the vehicles are always speeding right and imagine how many deers might face accidental problems or and they might die leading to their loss of population so therefore fragmentation always causes a decrease in the population of the animals living in that particular forest next is over exploitation one more causes for loss of biodiversity is over exploitation so we humans we have always depended on nature right be it the neanderthal man or the early men that were there to the present day man, human beings all of us depend on nature for one or the other thing especially for food and shelter but when need turns to greed we all need to 
हैव नीड बट दैट नीड शुड नेवर टर्न टू ग्रेट enough enough you if you have so much plot of land enough if you have so much plot of land for agriculture why unnecessarily because of greed in this extend your agriculture land towards the forest that is not needed so that is why needs should be there in a human being but greed should never be there so this when need actually turns to greed it leads to over exploitation of natural resources and therefore many species extinction have occurred in the last 500 years for example the stella sea cow the passenger pigeon all these have been become extinct especially because of the over exploitation and stella cow usually is found in russia and russia is a cold country wherein they depend on of uh, food which are rich in fat and stella cow was also such a food just like seal how people use the seal fat and all that as a food source right seal meat so that it keeps them warm especially the eskimos of russia similarly these people during those time also they were using the stella cow for meat purpose for the skin purpose to make clothes and for different purposes so that is how the stella cow because of excessive hunting because of the greed of the people it became extinct so likewise we have the passenger pigeon also which might have become extinct because of the meat purpose and presently many marine fish populations around the world are over harvested we all know that every now and then they say that fish is one of the good sources of meat because it contains a lot of omega 3 fatty acids which you don't find in other meat sources or in other vegetable sources very few vegetable sources like the flax seed for example offers this particular omega 3 fatty acids but apart from that it is not found anywhere but fish is the one that has abundant of omega 3 fatty acids and it is one of the best supplements for the brain development for memory and all that so also for many reason that is why in order to meet the demands of the growing population and the need of the people for fish meat the whoever is dealing with the fish industry they have started over harvesting the fishes in the ponds lakes river seas etc therefore endangering the continued existence of some commercially important species of fishes so that is why as and when the population of fishes come down the prices also tend to increase and not just that not about the prices also the species eventually might come become extinct because of over harvesting of the fishes so uh, that is how because of over exploitation biodiversity losses occurring next is because of alien species invasions when i say alien species don't think that as something coming from a different planet no alien species means anything coming from say for example india is a country wherein we live in so anything coming from other countries apart from into india it will be a alien species so here there are different alien species that have been introduced to various countries like we have the nile perch so this is the nile perch which is a fish it was introduced into lake victoria in east africa and why because it is a fish that maybe for consumption purpose and all that or for some uh, reason or for uh, recreational purpose and all that they have introduced this nile perch they brought it from some other country and they put it in uh, african lake that is lake victoria in east africa and this fish and this introduction of the nile perch eventually led to an ecologically unique assemblage of more than 200 species of cichlid 200 species of cichlid fish in the lake so these fishes nile perch what they did was they started feeding continuously on the cichlid fish and it is said that more than 200 species of cichlid fish got extinct completely extinct from the lake victoria itself because of the introduction of the nile perch so that is when when you bring some organism from another country into your country always it should be made sure that they don't pose a threat to the other species that are there in the country next one important example that we can take off is the parthenium so environmental damage caused and threat posed to a native species by the invasive weed 
species like the carrot grass that is parthenia and we have lantana camera then water hyacinth that is icornia so parthenium parthenium has actually it is not a indian plant but during the import of wheat what happened in the wheat these parthenium seeds were mixed and that is how they entered into india and nowadays throughout india you find parthenium right they have they have become such a new sense they are found in wastelands they are found growing in front of your house they are found growing in the road sides they are found growing in the agricultural fields and these parthenium they are posing a threat to a lot of other crop plants because they because it is a weed and their growth is very fast and also they make the crop plants deprived of nutrition as well and not just that these parthenium also cause a lot of respiratory and skin related problems in animals and human beings next is lantana camera so lantana camera whenever you visit a national park or a biosphere reserve you might have seen this particular plant growing abundantly there so this plant also was not native to india it was introduced because it had beautiful brightly colored flowers it was introduced as a ornamental plant or a plant for the garden from some country but eventually it entered into the forest and it started creating a havoc in the forest this plant grows to such faster rates and also it has thorns and it is bushy like wherein it covers the forest area in such a way that it makes it difficult for the animals to move around easily and not just that this plant also contains some poison which is not good for the animals if it is eaten by the animals it will cause a lot of digestive issues in the animals as well so likewise icornia icornia how beautiful the color is to look right it is a water plant icornia this is a water plant which was actually introduced to the lakes in order to make the lake beautiful imagine a lake that is plain without anything and imagine a lake filled with lotus it's so mesmerizing and it's so beautiful to look right that is when they started to introduce this icornia because the flowers were so beautiful lilac color and it was so beautiful in order to attract tourists and all that they introduced this plant to the lake but this plant started to grow so vigorously occupying the entire lake posing a threat to other plant species growing in the lake and also causing problems to the aquatic animals growing in the lake so that is how whenever you think of something you need to think about the future whether it is going to cause a problem in the future or not so this is how the introduction of alien species has caused a lot of biodiversity losses next is the illegal introduction of african catfish so this african catfish is called as clarias garipinus and it was introduced for aquaculture that is for meat purpose but it actually started to pose a threat to the indigenous cat catfishes that are present in the river so this was clarias gary gariapinus this was a catfish that was introduced from africa because it is so huge can grow so vigorously therefore providing good amount of meat and that is why it was introduced but this introduction actually caused the extinction of the river catfishes that were there so that is how one alien species that was introduced from africa into the rivers of other country caused the complete extinction of the catfishes that were already residing in that particular river so this is how introduction of alien species from one country for food purpose for recreational purpose for ornamental purpose and all that will cause a loss of biodiversity so next is because of co extinction so this is the fourth evil as actually causing a loss of biodiversity so when a species becomes extinct the plant and animal species associated with it an obligatory way also becomes extinct what do you mean by obligatory way means there are some species which can survive with both but if one species is there the other will survive say for example bees and the plants if bees are there the plants will survive if plants are there the bees will survive they are coexisting right so that is about coextinction so when a host fish species becomes extinct so there is a host fish species here when it becomes extinct its unique assemblage of parasites also meets the same fate 
so parasites so there are some parasites which resides inside the body of the fish and also they reside on the surface of the body of the fish but if these fishes become extinct then those parasites will also become extinct so one example that we can take of another example that we can take of here is the co evolved plant pollinator mutualism where i told you so if the pollinator bees are there the plants will exist if the plants are there then the bees will exist so some of the plant species gets wiped out from the earth the bee species will also get wiped out from the earth so that is how when they are interdependent on one another and if one species who are interdependent on one another becomes ex extinct it will lead to the extinction of the other species as well and this is called as co extinction so therefore co extinction can also lead to biodiversity so you can see here a parasite which is residing inside the fish so this parasite actually it feeds on the fish of course when it feeds on the fish it will the fish will die but this parasite needs the fish for its survival now if this fish is itself not there if the fish is itself threatened and if it becomes extinct then obviously these parasites which are residing inside the mouth of the fish will also become extinct so that is about co extinction so this was about the session so wherein we learnt about the loss of biodiversity and also what are the reasons wherein four reasons are there which is called as the evil quartet which actually results in the loss of biodiversity so in the next coming session let us study about biodiversity conservation wherein we'll study about two important conservation that is in situ conservation and ex situ conservation of biodiversity So we shall meet again in the coming session. Thank you.